Hello, wonderful people of Belmont. Welcome to another week, another parasha for my weekly drasha, my sermon for the parasha of Korach. And I want to start with the Mishnah, with a teaching from Pirkei Avot, Ethics of the Fathers, where the Mishnah discusses two different types of machlokes, two different types of argument disputes. There are those arguments that are waged for the sake of heaven, lishma. And there are those arguments that are waged not for the sake of heaven. And the example that the Mishnah brings are the disputes between the houses of Hillel, the famous sage, and his nemesis. The two that go at it the whole time, their heads locked in arguments and disputes, and that of the houses of Shammah. Hillel and Shammah. And they would argue all day, all night, in the base medrash, in the learning halls. They would argue for sometimes, the Gemara relates a time where they had a particular dispute for two and a half years. For two and a half years they would argue over the same ideas, each one coming up with their own and interpretations and halacha and law. But these arguments, the Mishnah says, these were for the sake of heaven. And then it brings for us an example from the other side. What's an example of something that's not for the sake of heaven? And of course, it brings us Korach. Korach argued with Moshe. He did not like Moshe's claim for leadership, for Aaron's claim for priesthood. He felt that it was his right. He felt that the people should have much more control, much more of a say, much more power and authority than they were given. And they argued for this. And this, the Mishnah says, this was an argument, Lola Shem Shemaim, not for the sake of heaven. And the Gemara goes and it tries to understand what, where are the tell signs? Where do we know? How can we distinguish those arguments that are for the sake of heaven? Because we pick an obvious one with that of Hillel and Shammai. And an argument not for the sake of heaven with that of Korach. These are two extremes. They're kind of easy examples. What, how do we define it? And I want to share with you a beautiful story that was widely publicized a good few number of years ago. I think it goes back to 2012, maybe 2013, maybe even a bit earlier. And there's a lovely elderly lady called Gloria McKenzie. Mrs. McKenzie, 84 years old. And she goes into a local supermarket, a small supermarket in somewhere in Florida. And there she is doing a bit of shopping, but she also wants to buy lottery tickets. And the lottery tickets work there, that you kind of just get your lottery ticket, you get given your random numbers and you, for that particular lottery, and you just take away your ticket and you wait for your numbers to come up. And just as she was getting to the checkout, she noticed another couple there, and she basically as the Americans call it, cut the line, right? She, she pushes in front, she cuts her up, pushes in front of her. So the lady she pushes in front of is a lady called Mindy Crandall. Mindy Crandall is a 34-year-old lady, and she's there with her 10-year-old daughter. And the 10-year-old daughter says to Mindy, she said to her mummy, she says, mummy, that lady cut in line, she cut in front of us, she pushed, she pushed. And uh, Mindy says to her daughter, listen, she did and she was wrong, but let us be polite. And then uh, let's go, she's a bit older than us and maybe she's in a rush and let's just be polite, it's probably the better thing to do. So what happens? Mrs. McKenzie, Gloria McKenzie goes and buys her lottery ticket and she leaves the store. Mindy Crandall buys her lottery ticket and leaves her way. Nothing happens until a few days later and they announce that in one of the largest ever lottery jackpot winners of $590 million goes, that winning ticket was to Gloria McKenzie. Gloria McKenzie, who cut in line, who pushed her way, was rewarded with the largest ever known jack, 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 lottery jackpot. $590 million. So they interview... Mrs. McKenzie. And in the interview, of course, any winner, especially with that amount of money, is going to meet a lot of public attention. She actually openly says she wants to thank the lady, she didn't know her name, the lady that allowed her for those few seconds earlier to go in front of her. Because surely had it been the other way around, probably the outcome would have been that Mindy would have won. So she said, I want to thank this lady. And she tells the story that she was there and she kind of pushed in front and this lady let it go and therefore she won the lottery. But Mikra, as it happened. Now the news loved this story, so they tracked down 
Mindy Crandall. And they find her, they manage to get her, and they interview her, and you can watch all of this online. And what does Mindy say? Mindy says, when they asked her, are you not, like, sad? Are you not angry, upset, annoyed? Surely if you would have had your rightful place, you should have the money, you should have had that major jackpot, you should have been the winner. And what does she say? She said, better to be polite than rich. Wow. I mean, that's all very well in theory, but she's saying that in the reality of being just a, a, you know, a hairbreadth away from being, having a whole life change with that amount of money. Better to be polite than rich. And then in another interview she did with ABC, she said, probably it was meant to be. So not only is her philosophy of life better to be polite than rich, better to be a good person, better to walk life with sincerity and honesty and let that be a light and a model for us to teach our children and to be and to live in this world but she also lives with the hashkafa with the outlook that it's meant to be everything in life was meant to be and if I'm meant to have that money I'll get it a different way but at least if I lead my life being polite in the righteous ways then the fulfillment of life will be outstanding will be immense, and what an impact that can make. Korach, I would argue, in trying to understand the difference between a machlechus, an argument, a dispute, l'shma, l'shem shamayim, for the sake of heaven or not, comes down to this word, sincerity. Korach will be forever, the par- from the Mishnah, will be for the paradigm of disputes, disagreement, jealousy, insincerity. The opposite of that the remedy for that is sincerity is honesty and righteousness therefore every interaction that we have in life we have to ask ourselves is this for me do i just want to be the leader do i want to be right am i are my eyes closed to the other side am i pushing my own agenda because that is representing korach or am i in this dispute because actually i care I believe in what I'm saying and I want what's best for me, you and everyone else. That's the tail sign of a machleiches, of a dispute ishma, for the sake of heaven. So I can look through all the relationships, whether that be professional, personal, social, family, whatever it might be. Every time I get entangled in an argument, a dispute, a discussion, what should my outlook for life be? It should always be with sincerity. It should always be what will be, will be. But what's my hashkafa? What's my outlook? How do I want to live my life? Do I want to live my life with sincerity and be happy? Or do I want to be right and therefore have all the negative impacts on this world? That is what we can learn from Korach. That's what we can learn from Mindy Crandall, a 35-year-old lady from Florida who just let a, a lady go in front of her who was so close to winning such an incredible sum of money, but totally understood what will be, will be. Let us live our life with sincerity. Let us live our life with integrity. And let us always try to be the shame shemayim for the sake of heaven. Wishing you all a beautiful Shabbos.